Hello and thanks for joining me. I'm Miss Fall. I'm a librarian at the Beakley Community Library in New Hartford, Connecticut, and I have a question for you. What type of animal do you think has four legs, four hooves, a tail, big, big ears, and is usually gray or brown? Hmm. Maybe this animal looks a little like a horse, or maybe it sounds like this. There's only one animal I know, and that's a donkey, so if you said donkey, you're right. And today's story time is about donkeys. The first book I'm reading for today's story time is called Walter Finds a Home. This book is written by Kat Smith with Brad and Kelly Blake, and the pictures are by Jazzy Smith. Walter Finds a Home is actually a true story about a newborn donkey abandoned at birth in the Arizona desert. And on this page, on the top, you can see where Walter signed the book himself with his hoof. It was a chilly summer night in the Arizona desert. The moon shined high in the sky. The coyotes howled and the owls hooted, except one animal who was alone and scared. It was a newborn donkey who was lying down in the dirt crying. He needed his mama, but couldn't find her. He wondered where she was. The little donkey tried to stand up, but he couldn't. His legs were still too wobbly. He fell to the ground and he began to cry. His mama was not there to teach him to walk or to feed him. She was not there to keep him warm. Where was his mama? The donkey began to cry again. Only this time, a funny noise came out of the donkey's mouth. Hee-haw! Hee-haw! said the donkey. The sound scared the little donkey. It scared the birds and all the animals that were around him in the desert. It even scared Mr. Snake, who didn't look so friendly. The donkey walked around until he became very hungry and very sleepy. He was also very, very thirsty. He kept walking until he found a small stream of water running down the mountain. He walked over and put his face close to the water. He could see his face, and it scared him. Even his big floppy ears scared him. He quickly ran away from the water. His legs weren't wobbly anymore. When the donkey felt safe, he laid down on the desert ground and began to fall asleep. Suddenly, the donkey awoke to a loud noise. Bang! It was the sound of a truck door being closed, and when he opened his eyes, he saw a man and a woman standing near him. The donkey began to bray again, hee-haw, hee-haw. What the donkey didn't know was they were there to rescue him, to take him home and make him part of their family. The man and woman, whose names were Brad and Kelly, had heard about a lonely donkey needing help after its mama left him all alone. The donkey didn't know his mama was very young herself when he was born, and she couldn't care for him. The donkey could see that Brad and Kelly were very friendly. Brad reached his hand out to the donkey, and when the donkey sniffed it, Brad gently placed a blanket around him and picked him up. Brad and Kelly brought the donkey home and began to care for him. They cuddled him and gave him a bottle of milk. It was good and filled his tummy. He wasn't hungry or scared anymore. The donkey was happy, and he played with four dogs that lived at the house with him. They even went on walks in the desert as a family. One night, while Brad was in the living room feeding the donkey his bottle, Kelly walked in and told him she thought of a name, Walter. The next few days were busy for all of them. Brad and Kelly worked together with other people to help adopt Walter. Weeks later, Walter was adopted. He was now part of Brad and Kelly's family. 
Walter had found his forever family, even if they did look different from him. And that is the story of how Walter found his home. The second story is, is pretty old and well known. It's called Sylvester and the Magic Pebble, and it is by William Steig. Sylvester is a donkey who finds out that sometimes you need to be careful what you wish for. Sylvester Duncan lived with his mother and father at Acorn Road in Oatsdale. One of his hobbies was collecting pebbles of unusual shape and color. On a rainy Saturday during vacation, he found a quite extraordinary one. It was flaming red, shiny, and perfectly round like a marble. As he was studying this remarkable pebble, he began to shiver, probably from excitement, and the rain felt cold on his back. I wish it would stop raining, he said. To his great surprise, the rain stopped. It didn't stop gradually as rains usually do. It ceased. The drops vanished on the way down. The clouds disappeared. Everything was dry and the sun was shining as if rain had never existed. In all his young life, Sylvester had never had a wish gratified so quickly. It struck him that magic must be at work, and he guessed that the magic must be in the remarkable-looking red pebble, where indeed it was. To make a test, he put the pebble on the ground and said, I wish it would rain again. Nothing happened. But when he said the same thing holding the pebble in his hoof, the sky turned black, there was lightning and a clap of thunder, and the rain came shooting down. What a lucky day this is, thought Sylvester. From now on, I can have anything I want. My father and mother can have anything they want. My relatives, my friends, and anybody at all can have everything anybody wants. He wished the sunshine back in the sky, and he wished that a wart on his left hind fetlock would disappear. And it did. And he started home, eager to amaze his father and mother with the magic pebble. He could hardly wait to see their faces. Maybe they wouldn't even believe him at first. As he was crossing Strawberry Hill, thinking of some of the many, many things he could wish for, he was startled to see a mean, hungry lion looking right at him from behind some tall grass. Well, he was frightened. If he hadn't been so frightened, he could have made the lion disappear, or he could have wished himself safe at home with his father and mother. He could have wished the lion would turn into a butterfly or a daisy or a gnat. He could have wished many things, but he panicked, and he couldn't think carefully. I wish I were a rock, he said, and he became a rock. The lion came bounding over, sniffed the rock a hundred times, walked around and around it, and went away, very confused. I saw that little donkey as clear as day. Maybe I'm going crazy he muttered. And there was Sylvester, a rock on Strawberry Hill with a magic pebble lying right beside him on the ground, and he was unable to pick it up. Oh, how I wish I were myself again, he thought. But nothing happened. He had to be touching the pebble to make the magic work, but there was nothing he could do about it. His thoughts began to race like mad, and he was scared and worried and helpless and hopeless. He imagined all the possibilities, and eventually he realized that his only chance of becoming himself again was for someone to find the red pebble and to wish that the rock next to it would be a donkey. Well, someone would surely find that red pebble. It was so bright and shiny. But what on earth would make them wish that a rock was a donkey? The chance was one in a billion. Well, Sylvester fell asleep, what else could he do? Night came with many stars. Meanwhile, back at home, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan paced the floor, frantic with worry. Sylvester had never come home later than dinner time. Where could he be? They stayed up all night wondering what had happened, expecting that Sylvester would surely turn up in the morning. 
But he didn't, of course. Mrs. Duncan cried a lot, and Mr. Duncan did his best to make her feel better. Both longed to have their dear son with them. I will never scold Sylvester again as long as I live, said Mrs. Duncan, no matter what he does. At dawn, they went about inquiring of all the neighbors. They're asking the neighbors if they'd seen Sylvester. They talked to all the children, the puppies, the kittens, the colts, the piglets, but no one had seen Sylvester since the day before yesterday. They even went to the police, and the police could not find their child. All the dogs in Oatsdale were searching for him. They sniffed behind every rock and tree and blade of grass, into every nook and gully of the neighborhood and beyond, but found not a scent of him. They sniffed the rock on Strawberry Hill, but it smelled like a rock. It didn't smell like Sylvester. After an entire month of searching the same places over and over again and asking the same animals over and over again, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan no longer knew what to do. They decided that something terrible must have happened and they may never see their son again, even though, all the time, he was really less than a mile away. They tried their best to be happy, to go about their usual ways. But their usual ways included Sylvester, and they were always reminded of him. They were just miserable. Life had no meaning for them any more. Night followed day, and day followed night, over and over again. Sylvester on the hill woke up less and less often. When he was awake, he was only hopeless and unhappy. He felt he would be a rock forever, and he tried to get used to it. He went into an endless sleep. The days grew colder, and fall came with the leaves changing color. Then the leaves fell, and the grass bent to the ground. And then it was winter. The winds blew this way and that, and it snowed. Mostly the animals stayed indoors, living on the food they had stored up. One day a wolf sat on the rock that was Sylvester, and howled and howled because he was hungry. Then the snows melted. The earth warmed up in the spring sun and things budded. Leaves were on the trees again. Flowers showed their young faces. One day in May, Mr. Duncan insisted that his wife go with him on a picnic. Let's cheer up, he said. Let us try to live again and be happy even though Sylvester, our angel, is no longer with us. And they went to Strawberry Hill. Mrs. Duncan sat down on the rock. The warmth of his own mother sitting on him woke Sylvester up from his deep winter sleep. How he wanted to shout, Mother, Father, it's me, Sylvester. I'm right here. But he couldn't talk. He had no voice. He was stone dumb. Mr. Duncan walked aimlessly about while Mrs. Duncan set out the picnic food on the rock. Alfalfa sandwiches, pickled oats, sassafras salad, timothy compote. Suddenly, Mr. Duncan saw the red pebble. What a fantastic pebble, he exclaimed. Sylvester would have loved it for his collection. He put the pebble on the rock. They sat down to eat. Sylvester was now as wide awake as a donkey that was a rock could possibly be. Mrs. Duncan felt some mysterious excitement. You know, father, she said suddenly, I have the strangest feeling that our dear Sylvester is still alive and not far away. I am, I am, Sylvester wanted to shout, but he couldn't. If only he had realized that the pebble resting on his back was the magic pebble. Oh, how I wish he were here with us on this lovely May day, said Mrs. Duncan. Mr. Duncan looked sadly at the ground. Don't you wish it too, father, she said. He looked at her as if to say, How can you even ask me such a question? Then Mr. and Mrs. Duncan looked at each other sadly. Oh, I wish I were myself again. I wish I were my real self again, thought Sylvester. And in less than an instant, he was. You can imagine the scene that followed. The embraces, the kisses, the questions, the answers, the loving looks, and the fond exclamations. 
when they had eventually calmed down a bit and had gotten home, Mr. Duncan put the magic pebble in an iron safe. Some day they might want to use it, but really for now, what more could they wish for? They had all that they wanted. So, if you find a shiny, fabulous red pebble, be very, very careful what you wish for. And now it's time for the craft. Okay, so I guess after those two stories, you know what kind of craft we're going to do today. We're going to make a donkey. And this is what you need. I have a donkey template. Some gray paint, preferably uh, washable paint, and a paintbrush. Some markers, or you can use crayons. I have gray yarn, black yarn, a pair of scissors, and a couple of clothespins. So the first thing we're going to do is cut these donkeys out of the template, and I have already done that. So here are my two donkeys. The reason you have two is because you are going to eventually glue them together and have one donkey. And I've used um, rather heavy cardstock paper for this. Um, okay, so I'm going to take a pink marker and I'm just going to color in the donkey's ears on each side. And that's really all you have to color. Next, I'm going to put on a very important part, which I neglected to mention, and that is some plastic gloves because of the paint. Even though it's washable, you don't want to get it all over yourself. So, got the plastic gloves. Going to open our paint, gray paint. Now we're not going to paint this part of the donkey, the mane. We're not going to paint that. We're not going to paint the, the front of his mane up here by his face. We're not going to paint his eye or his nose. Okay? And we don't need to paint his tail. So we just need to paint the main body of the donkey. So I'm going to take some paint on my brush. and start painting. Okay, so we finished painting the donkey and as you see we left the front of his face and the mane and the tails without paint. And now while these are drying we're going to take our clothespins. We're going to paint these gray as well. So And then after we finish painting these clothespins, we've got to wait for these to dry. Okay, so our donkeys and our clothespins are finally dry. I will be honest with you, it took about an hour for this paint to dry, but now it is dry. So the next thing we're going to do is take our yarn. Remember we have gray and we have black. And I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut a bunch of pieces of yarn. You can't see it there. I'm going to put it here. So we're going to cut a lot, a lot of yarn because we're going to use it for the tail and the mane of the donkey. So I finished cutting little small pieces of the black and gray yarn and I've cut longer pieces of the black and gray yarn. So the longer pieces are going to be for the tail and the shorter pieces are going to be for the mane of the donkey. So, I'm going to take our glue. I'm going to put some glue on the on the mane. And there's that front part too. And the tail. 
of one of the donkeys. Now I'm going to take the smaller pieces of yarn and I'm going to glue them just randomly. to make the mane of the donkey. And hopefully this donkey is starting to look a little like Walter, the donkey in the in the book that we read. So there's that part of the mane. And now we have the front. Okay, so we're going to stick that on. There we go. Now we have the long, a couple of longer pieces for the tail. So we've got one, two, it's kind of fun to work with yarn, but it takes a minute, definitely. So you just have to be patient, but you had to be patient with the long drying time too. So there is one side of our donkey. Okay, we're going to do the same with the other side. We've got our glue. I'm going to put some glue on the main and the tail. We'll take some smaller pieces of yarn and we're going to glue them to make the mane of our donkey. Look. Let's see. So we've got a couple pieces there. Do you know that Walter was a very special donkey because that was a true story of a donkey that needed to find a home. And thank goodness he did. So there's that part of the mane and we'll use a few more pieces of yarn for the front. Kind of sticks to your fingers. Can be a little bit messy, but it's not too bad. And it's a pretty easy craft this week, so. We've got some longer pieces of yarn for this side of the tail. So we're just going to glue that on like that. Make sure it sticks. Now we're going to take our first side, put it down. I'm going to put some glue on this side of the donkey because we're going to glue our two halves together. I'm going to take this half, line it up, and just stick it right down like that. Don't worry if some glue comes out on the sides because this glue will definitely dry clear. So now we just have to press it down a little to make sure that it sticks. Press down the ears and the face and the body. And there he is. Now, this is what the clothespins are for. They're going to be the donkey's legs. So. We're going to put one leg here, one leg here, let's see if you'll stand up for us. And there you go, there's your donkey. So I hope you enjoyed the story time this week. I hope to see you next time. Bye!